Hello class. In this video, I'm going to be discussing some of the differences between apes and humans, comparative anatomy. And so I'm going to be talking about the comparative anatomy of the skull. And so let's take a look at these two skulls. On the left is our closest living relative, the chimpanzee, and on the right is us, Homo sapiens. And so let's just take a look at a few of the features. So the first thing I want to demonstrate, and I'm going to look at the cranium, and I'm going to take it and turn it this way, and you can see there are wide zygomatic arches. See that zygomatic arch? This is why we learned about the zygomatic arch. To compare the zygomatic arch of a chimpanzee with that of a human. Take a look at how much smaller this zygomatic arch is. So this is where the chewing muscle, the, artic the chewing muscle connects to the mandible and then goes up through the zygomatic arch and as you know, articulates along the temporal line. Well, on a chimpanzee, their chewing muscle is so big and thick that it goes up here and it doesn't just articulate on the side of the skull. Instead, it articulates up here on this crest. So it comes all the way to the top of the skull and connects to this crest that sticks up. We refer to that as the sagittal crest. Humans do not have a sagittal crest. Our muscle articulates onto the side of our skull. They actually have to have an extra little bony crest that sticks up for their chewing muscles to articulate to. Actually, they're, they're biting muscles. Okay, so that is one aspect that's different. Larger zygomatic arches and a sagittal crest. The next thing I want to talk about is the brow ridge. So remember the supraorbital torus. This is the supraorbital torus in the chimpanzee. Look how profound and large and thick that is. Now take a look at on the human. It's just a tiny little bump in comparison. So we look at it from the side, you can see there's a bump there for sure. But if you look at a chimpanzee, it's a massive bar. The superorbital torus is very large on a chimpanzee. This also has to do with the chewing muscles. Uh, their chewing muscles are so substantive that it puts a lot of pressure downward on their facial skeleton. And so the superorbital torus provides a stable balance there to prevent it from uh, putting enormous pressure on the facial bones. Okay. So, of course, the next thing I want to talk about is the nuchal region and the foramen magnum. Now, we've spoken about this before, but essentially the nuchal region on the great apes is similar to that of a cat's. Uh, it's a little bit more upright. They're not completely quadrupedal like a cat is, but they have neck muscles that stick out toward the back and their foramen magnum is angled outward. Whereas in a human, the nuchal area is oriented downward. Our neck muscles attach below our skull and just a little bit on the side. And then the foramen magnum is in the center at the base and oriented downward. Okay, the next thing I'm going to compare is the teeth. And so take a look at the dental arcade of the human and the chimpanzee. Now you can see our dental arcade is shaped like a parabola. Theirs is shaped more rectangular. And that is because the big front teeth that they have, their incisors and canines, are much larger than ours. However, their molars and premolars are pretty comparable. So this makes means the shape of their mouth is much different from ours. And this can be seen also in profile. And so this is, uh, I hope I got it right, the articulation here, you can look at the human, in the case of the human, there's very little prognathism. So this is the way the human skull would articulate. Very little prognathism. Doesn't stick out very far. Now let's take a look at the chimpanzee. They have a very angled face. Look at that prognathism that sticks out there. They have, this is all about the shape of their front teeth as well. So they have, a very, they have a very angled face that slopes outward because of their alveolar prognathism. One last thing I want to mention uh, is about the lower jaw. So I'm just going to take this off and we can look at the mandible. First of all, look how much more substantial the mandible is on the chimpanzee 
from the human. Very thick boned and large dramatic mandible. That's because the large chewing muscles need this big surface to articulate to and also they need the thick bone because of the powerful uh, muscles as well. They need a big support for that. Our chewing muscles are nowhere near as thick or anything and so therefore we have a much smaller mouth with much smaller front teeth. But I want you to notice one other thing here. The chimpanzee does not have a chin. It does not have a mental eminence. We do. We have this extra little bony area there added on to reinforce our jaw in an area which would normally be pretty thin and weak. And so we have a chin, a chimpanzee, it just recedes there and has a very thick bone there already. They don't need the extra bone. All right, let's stop it there.